Hey, it's Grover from Photo Shelter, and I'm in New Jersey with Ed Mulholland. We're down here in his house, and, uh, and I want to talk about boxing and photography and sports and all the stuff that you do. Sure. So what do you shoot? You shoot boxing. Boxing was my start. Uh, from there, I kind of got into a few other sports, um, NHL, NFL, and ultimate fighting. I do a ton of mixed martial arts and UFC work. Okay, what's your favorite of, that's, of all those? Oh, God, I started with boxing, so I guess it's always my favorite. And from growing up, I used to drive my parents nuts. I'd always want to watch the fights and see the fights. And I'd, you know, we had HBO on the one TV down in our living room. I'd be running down, I was like, I, I got to put the fight on, you know? So I always grew up watching boxing. And uh, I think as a result, that has actually trans has helped me shoot boxing. Um, so I think that'll always have, like, the dominant place in my in my heart as far as, far as sports to shoot. Um, I do really like shooting uh, mixed martial arts and UFC. Um, it's a tougher shoot. I'm sure. You know, with the cage and, you know, boxing, you, 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 all sports, you tend to rely on your autofocus and things like that. But with, with UFC, you have the cage in front of you. So if you're hitting an autofocus, it's searching the fighters, then searching the cage and searching fighters. So it's, you, you kind of got to go a little old school and it's a little more skill involved. As far like, as hitting like a focus. focus, yeah, yeah. You're kidding. You know, some no. manual focus. God forbid. You know, <laughs> yeah. No, it's uh, it's good. It's 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 kind of a, it's a big sport on the rise. So, I've been doing a lot of UFC work. Yeah. Let's talk about um, how you got started. Like because um, you didn't you didn't do like me. Like I went to college and all that stuff. Yeah, you, I. You didn't do it like that. No, I went to college, but I went to I graduated from Rutgers University with a degree in economics. Yeah, see, that's what I mean. And photography. Uh, yeah. Economics. So I graduated with a degree in economics, which, um, you know, when a lot of photographers hear the story, they're like, oh, you know, how does that happen? Um, <laughs> I, I graduated with a degree in economics, started, uh, you know, doing the suit and tie job and all of that, and not completely thrilled with it, and uh, was, you know managing a healthcare company which got purchased and then got back into that business again with a colleague from there and we we're running it together and um it's just i my brother my brother scott took me to a a uh a fight uh got tickets we we're in like the fourth row and uh i took my cameras kind of as hey this is something to do you know it was a hobby and Shooting from the stands. Yeah, my brother jokes about that all the time. He calls me a hobbyist, um, <laughs> which is annoying. But uh, you know, it's went to the went to the fights and uh, took the camera with me. And knowing you know nothing about how you know photography and magazine sales and all that works at the time, um, having a business background and uh, shot the fights and kind of more as a goof sent them into a website called Fight News, um, which is you know the biggest boxing website around. And I followed it as a fan. Right. So I said, hey, I shot this fight. I'll take a look at these photos. And uh, I got an email back. And they were like, hey, we liked your work. Would you ever consider shooting a fight? So, um, you know, for next to nothing pay, I went down. Two weeks later, they called me up. Hey, can you do a fight? Uh, okay, wow. cool. Wow, I'm going to be on the apron of a, a fight. Yeah. This is, oh, crap. All right, great. So, uh, you know, went down there. And uh, yeah, took my cameras along and shot the fight, and uh, you know, transmitted a few images, sent them, you know, a couple that they needed, and uh, actually another interesting story coming out of it. So the press conference afterwards, I'm sitting at the press conference, and I had packed cameras away, and you know, I had decent equipment, but nothing like I use now. And um, I always, I mean, my iPhone's on me. I always have some kind of camera on me, point and shoot, whatever. I had a point and shoot in my pocket. And at the press conference, uh, the fighter who won the fight, fighter by the name of Ricardo Mayorga, comes up to the in crazy, you know, Nicaraguan fighter, and he comes up to the, the podium after he won the championship, knocked the guy out in the second round, and he takes out a Budweiser, and he takes a cigarette, and he's got the title belt on. So here's this world champion with a Budweiser and a cigarette, and he's going like this, and I, had, I took the point, I was done shooting, I took the point shoot out and snapped the photo. That was my first Sports Illustrated photo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you had a Sports Illustrated photo with out of a, a out of an Olympus like you know whatever that was sitting in my pocket. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, I don't think I've really actually said that in public ever before. Um, I guess probably about two and a half years after I first started doing it, it's a Wednesday afternoon. I got a call from HBO, 
and HBO, and you know, as far as boxing goes, HBO is is it. I mean, they're the, you know, they're the biggest network. Yeah. They run the biggest fights, and called me up on a Wednesday after, hey, we need you in Atlantic City on Friday. Can you shoot? Yeah, absolutely. I thought it was a joke if you know someone playing a prank on me or something. Yeah, I can be there. Absolutely, go down to Atlantic City, and uh, they offered me a three month contract, and I did like fight in Germany and some in Vegas, and three months been around going. Oh, this is really great. I hope this never ends. And, you know, luckily enough, at the end of three months, they offered me a contract. And they renew it every year. And so I've been yeah, shooting with them great. since 2006. That's yeah. really great. Um, I want to look at some pictures. I want to talk about some sure. pictures. And uh, first, I want to know, what is the hardest, most difficult shot to get? Uh, Boxing-wise boxing. or, or mixed martial arts would be the... You know the the fist, the proverbial fist on the on the face. I guess you know if you were shooting, you know, baseball would be you know the bat, you know, the ball compressed on the bat or, or yeah, similar. Yeah. I mean, you you probably have a lot more chances to get a a ball on the bat during a baseball game than you do during a fight. Because, yeah, why is it so hard? Um, is it timing or well, you know, you'll hear a lot of guys, a lot of guys, will be, oh, you know, you watch their shoulder and yeah. If you're watching for a shoulder and the shoulder, it, the punch is gone. I mean, you're going to, it's, um, I mean, you have a lot of these photos. Yeah. It's, it's, um, so what's your secret? I don't know if I necessarily have one. <laughs> I, I, I'll be honest with you. I mean, I watched so much boxing and I'm a fan of the sport and, and I kind of truly think that you watch the best shooters in each sport and I think you'll find that they're generally fans of the sport. Um, maybe they weren't when they first started shooting it, but they become a fan and they study the game and they know the athletes mm -hmm. and you know they'll know you know what a you know in baseball what a base runner can do and what he's going to set up you know and you kind of it kind of gives you a little bit of advantage over a guy who just shows up and and really doesn't know what's going on. Yeah. So I think that's part of it. Um, you know, there's also certain situations in a fight you you kind of know when you're going to get that opportunity. Yeah. Um, you know, if you have a, a, a southpaw, a, a lefty, fighting, you know, a righty, half of the fight you're not going to be able to shoot because both of their backs are going to be towards you. So you're always waiting for that one fighter to spin around, and then you, you're really looking for the shot. Mm -hmm. It's just little, you know, little kind of things like that that'll, you know, set up shots like this. And uh, it's, it's just, uh, it's a little bit of luck. I mean, you know, if, I mean, the, the amount of time that it takes for the punch to be thrown and, and hit the face. I mean, you'll get a lot where you'll see the fighter's face turned and you'll see the sweat spray, but the glove's not on the face. It's still a great shot. It's still, you know what happened. It looks great. Um, you know, it's a good, tight action shot, but the glove on the face is really what you're going for. I mean, that's kind of sets it apart. And, uh, you know, you, you see, guys can go, you can shoot a whole night. And, you know, the other thing is you may have 10 fights uh, you know, on a boxing card, it really only counts if you get it in the main fight. You know, right, that's right. the one that you're putting out there. That's the one that people want to see. You know, when I shoot for HBO. You might have ten fights on a card, but I'm only shooting the two televised bouts. Those are the only ones that anyone's ever going to see. So, you know, it's you don't have as big a window as you think. But I, I, I don't want to say I've been lucky enough to get a lot of them. But I mean, I like to think there's yeah. you know a fair amount of skill involved. But as far as looking for a, a pinpoint secret. You know, I don't know if I don't know if there's there's you know, I I don't rely um, a lot on on burst. I don't shoot nearly as much as a lot of guys do. I mean, I see guys sit on the on the motor drive. Um, so you're shooting a Canon uh, Mark IV. Mark IV. Um, yeah, Mark IV is generally for boxing with a 24 to 70, um, and I'll have a second body with a 70 to 200. Sometimes I'll have a third body with a 300, um, just to do corner shots and get you know good tight expressions in the corner um a lot of guys shoot with a 16 or 35 but you know i think that's a lot of guys who don't shoot a lot of boxing so it's uh, more of a comfort level because it's uh, wider when i shoot boxing my style when i shoot boxing um i like to shoot tight i mean the legs that's harder to do yeah. the legs are meaningless so you know you you got to kind of you know it's a little tougher to keep in the frame especially if you're using a 70 to 200 um you know it's it's tight but uh you know, legs are meaningless. It's not like another sport where, you know, you don't necessarily want to shoot a running back from the waist up because, you know, his legs are a vital part of the game and guys are diving at him and stuff. But in boxing, the legs are, 
really not a part of it until there's a knockdown. You know, now when someone gets knocked down, you want to go wide and you want to see the fighter on the canvas and you want to see the fighter walking away looking at him and, you know, the referee counting and that right. kind of tells a story. But as far as action shots go, you know, waist up and, you know, tight is, is the way to go. You know, I'm, I'm, a, sports, I'm a sports nut. I love sports. Um, I could probably make more money doing, you know, weddings and, you know, babies and things like that. It's not what drives me. Um, not that I wouldn't do any of that stuff, but I, I just, I love sports. I, I love shooting boxing. I love shooting UFC. And um, I think part of that translated into my work initially and made it a little bit easier for me, I guess, to some extent, because I could talk to the clients about it. Oh, well, you know, we're kind of like, oh, well, I know this fighter. I can do this and this and this. And, you know, I started, you know, different angles and remotes and playing with all that stuff and just having fun with it. And, you know, I was surprised that, you know, well, that worked. Then uh, the big thing, and, and photographer, I don't think all, younger photographers definitely realize this, is how everyone, and my, my editor, um, Jessica DeBlanc at, at HBO, she kind of reinforces that in my head, everyone, that they all talk to each other. Photo editors at different places talk to each other and everyone knows everyone else. And, you know, if you do a good job for one client and you're easy to work with, then, you know, they're more than happy to refer you to someone else. Oh, do you know? Yeah, absolutely. Easy to work with. Great. But so everyone talks. So, you know, makes you do a good job. It's going to translate. You know, you may bang your head up against the wall for a while. And but once you get in and, and, and get a break, um, they all talk and you'll get picked up here and there. It's, it's not going to be right. quick. It's a slow burn, but uh, I think part of it that really helped is that I just love what I do. That's really the biggest thing. I love what I do. And I don't necessarily think everyone does. And I'm in a lucky spot where I, I truly love what I'm doing. Yeah. I, well, it's obvious, you know, and you do a great job. Yeah, so. it's, uh, yeah. You, know, it's, you know, talent and hard work and a little bit of luck sprinkled in <laughs> along the way. So yeah. the next time you're seeing, uh, you know, watching a fight, um, and you see that guy with the red Rutgers hat somewhere around the ring, uh, it's Ed Mulholland. So thanks a lot, Ed. Thank you.